Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to recap my trip to Chicago um, a week ago, where I went to attend ChaiCon 8, which was the 80th World Science Fiction Convention, otherwise known as Worldcon. So before I go any further, if you don't know anything about Worldcon, Worldcon is a very bookish fandom focused convention and every year's Worldcon um, administers and hosts the Hugo Awards which is how I got into following Worldcon in general because I've been pretty engaged with the Hugo Awards over the past like eight years now. <laughs> With the exception of this one past year, I should say. Um, so yeah, Worldcon is not the same thing as like going to a Comic-Con. Um, different focus, different vibe, not as much like cosplay and everything. Uh, but if you are really, really into science fiction and fantasy literature, it is a really good convention for that. And also, of course, if you care about the Hugo Awards. Um, so I have been to a few previous World Cons. I have attended um, the 2016 one in Kansas City, which was Mid-Americon 2. Um, 2018 was in San Jose. That is the gold standard of World Con conventions for me. I compare all others to that one because it was just such an amazing trip. I've also been to um, the Irish World Con in Dublin in 2019. And like many people, I attended Con Zealand virtually in 2020 due to the pandemic shutting down all travel to New Zealand. Um, and I was supposed to attend Discon 3 in DC last year in 2021. I was going to attend physically, but was unable to due to a major life change. And then I couldn't really attend virtually either because I was extremely sick, which sucked, honestly. I think I think I watched The Masquerade and I watched the Hugo Award ceremony uh, virtually only because I was a Hugo Award finalist last year, but I had laryngitis and I could barely speak to my friends. <laughs> So that was kind of a bummer. Um, so this year going to ChaiCon 8 was, it, it was just like bouncing back from just everything because of the pandemic. Um, I had so many travel plans and plans to see friends and everything that got canceled because of the pandemic. So it felt like making the Chicago trip happen was just this way of trying to get back on track with my life and my friend group and all of this stuff. So. It was a really good trip. I'm probably going to talk more about seeing things around Chicago than the actual convention, um, just for reasons. Um, I think when you've been to the same convention over and over again, or a, something like Worldcon, it becomes a bit more of an excuse to travel to a new place, to do all the tourist stuff, and to hang out with your friends. And maybe you'll see some of the things at the actual convention every once in a while. That's definitely my experience with Worldcon this year, and I knew it was going to be like that going into it and like planning the trip and everything. So I'm going to talk about Worldcon first, like what I actually did there, what I thought of it, and then I'm going to talk about the rest of the stuff that I did at Chicago. Um, so I wasn't alone in Chicago. I went with a group of friends, um, primarily Rhea from The Book Finch, Andrea from Infinite Text, Kelsey from The Fancy Hat Lady Reads, Joe from A Final Blow Joe, Paul, his channel is now, now called Paul Weymouth. Um, Thomas from SFF 180 was there, and Diana from Bookish Die. Um, some other people popped in at different points in the convention too. I did not meet everybody, but that, those are the people that I spent most of my time with. Um, uh, my friend Brie from Brie's Books was also there for two days, I think, and it was really good to see her. Um, so yeah, like we all planned to go together. We hung out together. We traveled in packs together because we are shy, introverted booktubers, and we want to hang out with people we know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time and I am so happy that I was able to see my friends in person again because I miss them all very, very much. Um, I also did meet some of you guys who watch. Uh, some people did come up and say hi to me, so thank you for doing that. I did get to speak to Brett again. Thank you for coming up and saying hi again. Um, I always love meeting you. <laughs> so yeah, that was a really good time. What did I actually do at the convention? Um, so like I said, 
the convention is very, very bookish. It tends to be very focused on actual like SFF literature. Obviously, like a focal point of the convention is the Hugo Awards. Um, and there, there's a lot of stuff that happens at the convention that I can't really speak to because I've never gone to those things. The program is ridiculously large every year. And I tend to just check out the panels and the readings. But I know there are a lot of other things that are more interactive. There are music shows, there are workshops, there are tabletop talks where you can sit down and talk to your favorite authors in small groups, things like that. Um, but yeah, I mainly go to a couple of panels that interest me. I try to see readings because I really like kind of getting a glimpse into what authors have been working on or what their next book is. Unfortunately, I only got to one reading this year. That was just a, a timing thing. Um, I also really enjoy going to the art show and the dealer's room. I would say if there's like any one thing that you should do at Worldcon that you might think about skipping, but don't, it's the art show. It's always worth going to see all the beautiful art. And a lot of the artists in the art show also um, are in the dealer's room. So if you like their stuff, you can go buy it. <laughs> but it is always worth seeing. And I will never forget the art show in Dublin in 2019. It was just so, so beautiful and very big. Um, so the art show in Chicago this year was also really good. I saw a lot of stuff that I really enjoyed. And I walked out without buying a single thing because art is expensive, but it is very pretty. Um, I also go crazy in the dealer's room. So that is mostly what I'm going to show you from the actual convention is stuff that I got in the dealer's room. And it's, for me, it's because like, they're always really interesting and cool things at a Worldcon dealer's room. Um, I mean, they're very niche things for like the SFF audience, but also for me personally, there's not a, a good place near me to get things like this. So going to Worldcon means that I get to actually go to booksellers that focus on SFF or artists and jewelry makers that make my style of stuff. So as people have noticed, um, having been with me at World Cons in the past, I lose my freaking mind in the dealer's room and my friends are very good at enabling me. So thank you guys. <laughs> So let's do a little bit of a book haul at this point in the video. I have a couple of things that I bought at the actual convention and then a few things that I got at other places in Chicago. I'm just gonna lump them all into one book haul at this point. Um, so the first thing that I have is Tomorrow's Parties. This is an anthology edited by Jonathan Strawn and the subtitle is Life in the Anthropocene. And I, I had heard of this before so I think it's Strawn's latest anthology, and I always um, like his anthologies. They always have interesting themes, and um, the authors that he tends to include in his anthologies, the types of stories, are often like my thing. So I keep an eye out for Jonathan Strawn's work. Um, so this anthology is... Uh, you know, stories about living in this era, the Anthropocene, the, you know, era of the planet that is dominated by humans. Um, I don't know much more about it than that, and that's fine. Um, some of the stories in this are by um, James Bradley, Meg Ellison, Tade Thompson, Dale Gregory, Greg Egan, Sarah Gailey, Justina Robson, Chen Chufan, so that's a, a translated story, um, Malka Older, Saadzi Hossein, I'm excited about that one, and James Bradley. So yeah, um, this one is also illustrated. There's artwork in this one, little, little ones, but that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, and this is a 2022 anthology. All the stories um, I think are original to this, so that's good. I need to read more short stories so I can nominate them next year. <laughs> Um, a surprise find that I'm really excited about is Stan's Kitchen by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is a Nesfa Press publication. They always do these like really solid hardcovers. I have some of the Vorkosigan novels in Nesfa hardcovers and they're just, they're hefty. They actually weigh significantly more than other hardcovers. So this is a collection of some of Robinson's 
favorite pieces. I think it's mainly essays just throughout his career. And I'm always interested in what Kim Stanley Robinson has to say. And I figured that this would be a good collection to kind of dive into his nonfiction writing, which I have not read very much of before. I'm not sure if I completely understand the cover art of this. Whenever I see this cover art from a glance, I feel like it's an underwater scene because of the colors, but it's not. It's like the mountains at night. <laughs> There's significant glare, so you probably can't see that. But anyway, this looks like a cool read, and somehow I missed this. It came out in 2019, and I'd never even heard of it. The one book that I was looking for to buy at the convention is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Um, I started reading this uh, from the library. Um, and I decided I liked it so much that I wanted to buy my own copy. Uh, so I did actually get my own copy and should hopefully read this, uh, the entire thing in the near future. I'll have to restart the book because it was like a couple of weeks ago that I read like the first chapter. Anyway, this is um, Mariano Garcia's latest novel. And yeah, it's a take on The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells, obviously the daughter of Dr. Moreau. So I am excited about this one. And every novel by Moreno Garcia is different from the previous one, so I really don't know what to expect from this other than I will probably really enjoy the writing and the characterization, which is what I typically enjoy from her work. Next, I hit up the PM Press booth. I always love seeing their stuff. You may recognize this style of book from previous book hauls. Um, this is The Science of Herself by Karen Joy Fowler, and it is one of the Outspoken Authors um, collections. And I have read quite a few of these little collections before. Um, I own, I think, almost every single one by a female author or non-binary author so far. I tend to prioritize those. Um, so yeah, I just got another one. This is one of the older ones that I hadn't read yet and I saw there was like, oh, I should get that. Um, so yeah, I also have the newest one by Vandana Singh. Maybe I'll do a different book haul from other things I've bought this year, but I didn't get that at Worldcon. I just bought it right before going to Worldcon. Anyway, I have this. It'll be a quick read. Typically, the Outspoken Authors collections have like a short story or two, maybe a nonfiction piece and an interview. Um, they are very short, but they're these really lovely bite-sized reads, and sometimes they are amazing, and sometimes they're just not my thing, but I will probably end up reading all of them. The single most expensive book that I bought on the whole trip is this signed copy of A Civil Campaign by Lois McMaster Bujold, another one with a lot of glare. It's got a protective um, wrap on it. Um, I bought this when I saw it because I truly have never seen a copy of this book for sale in any bookstore before, and it's one of like two of the Rokosuka novels I didn't own yet. Um, so I own it. <laughs> Someday I will do a big reread of the Rorko Skin Saga. This particular one is kind of a like romantic comedy. Um, I, I think it actually is like a comedy of manners in its like formula. It is hilarious and I really enjoyed it back in the day. So yeah, glad I finally have a copy of this one. And then the last two are little books. I got the newest book from Kelly Robson, which is High Times in the Low Parliament. I don't know anything about this. I bought it purely because Kelly Robson wrote it. Um, it says on the back, this is a charming historical fantasy romp featuring a flirtatious scribe, some irritable fairies, and a precarious parliament. I hope it is a fun and lighthearted read because I am in the mood for that. Lastly, for things that I bought at the actual convention, this was my impulse purchase. It is Elemental Haiku, Poems to Honor the Periodic Table Three Lines at a Time by Mary Soon Lee. And that is actually what it is. It's just a series of little tiny poems about each of the elements of the periodic table. And I am about... 40% of the way through it actually, and I'm really enjoying it. I just thought this was so cute, and the topic of it was just adorable. <laughs> Not gonna lie, like I wanted to read more haiku, but this was just a, a really geeky topic, so I am really enjoying this. I'm not sure that I would keep this, I'm not sure that I would ever like reread it in the future, um, but for just a one time fun read, it is, is definitely worth it, so there is that. And then I have three more books uh, to talk about. I'm kind of going out of order because these were 
are things I did not buy at the convention, but we're gonna talk about them here. Um, so while we were all in Chicago, we went to one comic store. There was one relatively close to the convention center. I think it's called Graham Cracker Comics. Um, it was a pretty interesting comic store. They didn't have a lot of stuff that I was interested in, but I, I'm also like, I get a lot of comics from the library, so I'm not super tempted. Um, I did get this comic, which is called Ordinary Gods, Volume 1, God Spark. It is by Kyle Higgins and Joe Clark, and the artwork is by Philippe Watanabe. I've already read this actually, um, and I thought it was okay. <laughs> I bought it because it really reminded me of like Kieran Gillen's work and The Wicked and the Divine, which is one of my favorite comic series. Um, so in, in its concept, it is pretty similar to The Wicked and the Divine. Unfortunately, it was just very mediocre. <laughs> So this one is going to be like donated to the library pretty soon. I don't think I'll continue on with the series. Um, I did like the artwork though, so it was it was worth checking out just in case it was something that I might like. And then the other two books that I got came from the Field Museum. I got a copy of The Wondrous Workings of Planet Earth by Rachel Ignatowski, which is the last of her books that I didn't own a copy of. I read this a couple years ago when it came out and I just hadn't gotten around to buying it yet. So y'all know I love Ignatowski's art style and this particular book is all about the ecosystems of Earth. It is really beautiful. I really enjoyed reading it. There's also a puzzle of the artwork from this which is really good. And you know I also really enjoy uh, jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> And the last thing is probably another impulse purchase, let's call it that. This is Dinosaurs and Other Prehistoric Life. Um, I also got this from the Field Museum and I got it because I was in love with the dinosaur exhibit at the Field Museum and I just really wanted to read more about the topic. And this book is just so cool. Um, so many illustrations, so many pictures. I'm pretty sure I'll read it once and then never again. Um, but it's just really cool. Aside from books, the other things that I got at the dealer's room were pieces of jewelry because I have an addiction. So the first thing that I got is an ammonite necklace. I was looking for one of these before I went on the trip, so I was really excited to find somebody who had pieces of ammonite jewelry, and I really, really love this. This came from... Undiscovered Treasures, um, and everything that I have information on, I will leave a link to down below in the description in case you wanna look any of these places up. Though I will forewarn you that for some reason, a lot of like the jewelry dealers at Worldcon don't have um, like a lot of online shops. Many of them are still like in person only. So yeah, really love my ammonite necklace. I've worn it a couple times already. Next up is this beautiful pair of glass earrings and this is from Nevena Smith Designs. Um, I love these. The colors really appeal to me and I just love the look of like the twisted glass spiral. Um, she had a lot of really, really beautiful um, earrings there and I contained myself and only got one pair. <laughs> And then the last thing that I bought at the convention is the doozy. I kept seeing this necklace like every day at the convention and I kept saying, oh, I love that. I keep thinking about it, but it's so expensive. And then I bought it on the last day. <laughs> so that is this. So this is a like beaded bib style necklace from the Pugil Horde. Um, she had so many beautiful pieces there. I mean, I am a sucker for beaded jewelry and I could have walked away with so much of her stuff. Um, I don't know if she has a website, but once again, I will try to uh, put all the relevant information down below in the description. And I just love this. <laughs> it is it's very space themed, obviously. It's got spaceships on it. Um, it also doesn't look too bad on me, <laughs> so I feel like I need to upgrade my wardrobe so that I can wear some of these um, 
fancier pieces of jewelry. Other things from the convention itself that are worth mentioning, um, I did attend the masquerade, which was probably the high point of the convention for me. Um, the masquerade is what Worldcon calls its cosplay show, and this year it was fantastic. There were a good number of entries, the quality was really high, and the presenter for the ceremony was just fantastic. It was hilarious. I personally think that the masquerade had like better energy and more like engagement and stuff than the actual Hugo Awards ceremony did. Some years are like that, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, I super enjoyed the masquerade, just seeing all the costumes and how excited people were. There was like a halftime show with like belly dancers and stuff. It was fantastic. And then of course the culmination of Worldcon is typically the Hugo Awards ceremony, which I don't have much to say about this year. Um, yeah, it was kind of average. <laughs> My, my opinion on the Hugo Awards this year is no reflection on the quality of the finalists and the winners, I just want to stress that, but I wasn't really feeling it this year. Um, I didn't feel like there was as much excitement or energy from the audience during the ceremony. Um, it wasn't my favorite style of presenting or, or humor during the ceremony, and I just... I wasn't feeling a lot of the uh, the categories this year. I think there were like four categories that I actually cared what won. <laughs> And that really is a result of just, um, I, I haven't had the time or the brain space to be as engaged with the Hugo Awards and nominating and voting and stuff um, in this past year than I have been in other years, which is something I'm really hoping to change uh, next year for the 2023 voting. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a thing and I'm happy that I went, but um, it just, it wasn't as like exciting and like, pumping me up as it usually does when I go to the ceremony. So, ah oh well, so, some years are like that. So, with that all being said, let's talk about the other things that I did during the trip. Um, I did a lot of sightseeing. Um, my friends and I were all really interested in going to a bunch of places around Chicago since none of us had ever been there before, except for, I know Diana had been there before, but um, it was really new to most of us and we just really wanted to see all the cool places. So uh, we went to a lot of museums, we did a lot of walking around the city and and stuff like that. Um, so in terms of museums, we went to the Field Museum first, and that was my absolute favorite. I would like to go back someday and see it all again, and then all the stuff that we missed, because it's impossible to see everything in like four hours. You need like eight hours to see everything in that museum. Um, so yeah, I loved everything about the Field Museum. My favorite thing was definitely the really, really big dinosaur exhibit. Um, I took a lot of pictures and I think some video um, in there as well, and it was just fantastic. Um, and I went absolutely crazy in the gift shop as well. Uh, because that's what you do, right? I got a notebook because I need to have stuff for next year's journal. Um, so a lot of the stuff at the Field Museum is this place called Cognitive Surplus. Um, and I really like their line of notebooks. Um, they're all like science and natural history themed, and they've got the dot grid on the inside, which is my, my favorite thing for notebooks. So this one is dinosaur bones, as you can see. I got another pair of earrings. This is my little memento from the like Hall of Gems experience. These are just tumbled stone, but um, I really loved the Hall of Gems and all of the the rocks and the geology exhibit and everything, so these are really cute. I got a little pouch. I can always use more of these, and once again, I wanted something from the Hall of Gems experience. This thing is so handy. I can put almost everything that I got <laughs> at museums into this one pouch. Um, like I said, I got uh, one of Rachel A. Natofsky's um, books at the Field Museum as well. They had a lot of her stuff there because she does like the whole women in science line, um, and one of the things they had there were some of her designs on these scarves, and I love this one. I think the color is so, so beautiful, and I wear a lot of scarves. <laughs> I wear a lot of things as like shawls and stoles as well. Um, so yeah, I love this. I love her artwork so much. 
And then I think the last thing that I got at the Field Museum, no, not the last thing, two more things. Um, I got the Great Women of Science tote bag. Once again, I think this is the Cognitive Surplus brand and it's got a really nice pocket on the inside as well. It's just a very high quality bag and you can, you can always use really nice tote bags. And I really like this design as well. I think the other one is the Great Beards of Science, <laughs> which is pretty funny. And truly the last thing I got the Field Museum is a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> This is the um, Cavallini & Co vintage puzzle brand, and it is mushrooms. I have one of these puzzles. Um, I got one for Christmas last year, which was the like celestial map. And yeah, this one is a vintage mushroom um, design. Uh, funnily enough, when I got this, Andrea told me that she had bought the same puzzle before. <laughs> it's very much her style, I have to say. Other places that we went to included the Shedd Aquarium and the Museum of Science and Industry and the Art Institute. I enjoyed them all a lot, though like I said, the Field Museum was definitely my favorite. Um, I feel like the, the Museum of Science and Industry had a lot of really cool exhibits, but we didn't have a chance to see that many of them. Um, it was highly interactive. Like it is a wonderful place to take children. It's just really, really meant for that interactive experience with younger kids. Um, I did feel like as much as the exhibits and stuff are really cool, um, the interactive bits were a little bit too basic for me as a science geek. Like I already knew a lot of the stuff, but it was definitely worth going. Um, the Shedd Aquarium was really great. It was one of the like chiller experiences, uh, probably because it was all like aquariums and water and dim lighting. Uh, we got to see, I think, the last um, dolphin show of the day, which was really, really cool. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was really great. The other uh, museum that we went to was the American Writers Museum. It was within walking distance of the convention center, so a couple of us went on the first day. And I got two things at that gift shop. I got a punctuation marks um, magnet which says punctuation marks not just for emoticons, which, you know, that describes my life. <laughs> I also got a pair of socks, which is this out of print brand. Um, it's a, a due date slip, which I always need socks. And I'm trying to think if there's somewhere else that we went. I feel like I'm missing something, but it's not coming to me. Oh, we went on the riverboat tour. So everybody always recommends the Chicago Architecture Center things, and they do um, riverboat tours of the city's architecture. So we did that one evening, and it was really, really cool. It was fun to be on a boat. I haven't been on a boat in a really long time, but we did it at night as well. So the view of the the amazing buildings and skyscrapers and stuff along the river was super awesome. Um, and then we all slept like babies after that. <laughs> so it was very relaxing and I uh, will never look at skyscrapers uh, the same way again. Like I learned a lot about them. So that was a lot of fun. So that was my Worldcon and Chicago experience. There are so many other things that happened that I completely forgot to talk about, I'm sure. Um, there were all the restaurants and other places that we went to, but I didn't get things when we went there. Just all that stuff. But mainly, it was a great trip because I got to see people again. I got to hang out with friends. I, I love my friends so much and I really, really miss them already. It was great to like actually be physically at Worldcon again and seeing all the people who are also knitting <laughs> while attending panels and stuff like that. Um, it's like being around your people again and that's really comforting actually. So I'm so glad that I was able to go and have a really good trip and hopefully we'll do this again next year. Um, Worldcon next year is being hosted in Chengdu, China. I will not be attending it physically. I have some hope that I will be able to attend the virtual convention. It sounds like Chengdu is gonna try really hard to have a good virtual experience for people who cannot travel that year. So I am looking forward to that. 2024 will be the next um, Worldcon that I try to actually attend in person. It is going to be in Glasgow in Scotland, and I am extremely excited about that. <laughs> 
I really, really, really want a an excuse or, or a chance to go visit Scotland. So yeah, that is pretty much everything I have to say. Sorry if this was a little bit rambly and unstructured, but um, it's mostly a haul. <laughs> So um, yeah, if you were also um, attending ChaiCon, either physically or virtually, I hope you had a great time. Let me know what your experience was. If you plan on attending Worldcon in the future, please also let me know that. It's really exciting. And yeah, I'll be back to talk to you again soon about other bookish things. And until then, bye.